Hey, Black Cat Studio here with a budget build for the new Shifting Stones event that'll be happening this Friday, which is November 17th. Very excited for the event. Here I have a Flame Surge Totem build. Uh, you can see the whole passive tree here. Let's dive right into how to do it. So I made sure to pick items that would be reasonably accessible even in a temporary league. The most expensive of all these items being the Soul Mantle. Uh, getting that as a 6 link will be a little bit tough, but it's not required, it's just a good damage boost. We have Singularity, which is pretty reliable to get, usually only cost a few C, even in the temporary leagues. We have a basic Shaper Shield, which should be reasonably easy to get after a few days in the league. Grimner's Resolve, which is pretty easy to pick up. Torchoke Step, which is a very, very common unique. Marlene's Fallacy for Crit Multi and Culling Strike. And Burex Pass, which is a level 20 ring, which is also pretty easy to get. It's the cheapest of the Barracks rings. And then for Rare Gear, we have just basic Crusader Gloves. The Searing Exarch and the Eater of Worlds Implicits aren't actually being applied right now, and you don't need the enchantment that's on it. But they all add varying damage boosts. You get about 200,000 extra damage for the Unnerve and about 200,000 extra damage for the Fire Exposure. But they're, uh, they're not being applied, as you can see by the red text. The Commandment of Light means that you will drop Consecrated Ground when you take a Critical Strike, which means that you'll have additional Curse re Effect Reduction, which will be very valuable with Soul Mantle and just general mapping. We have just a basic Diamond Ring here for Resistances, basic Life Belt for Resistances. Now moving on to Flasks, we just have a standard Life Flask, standard Enduring Eternal Mana Flask, because we don't have a huge amount of mana, so it makes sure that the effect doesn't go away. Uh, we have a Granite Flask with increased armor on it to give us a little boost and bring us up to 90% physical damage reduction. We have a Silver Flask, which is surprisingly better than a Diamond Flask here when it's paired with cast speed. Plus it also gives us movement speed, which we desperately need. As you can see, we are at 15% right now, which is not amazing. We actually have 25% on the boots, but we have far too many decreases from our armor to be able to use all of it. And that is why we have a Quicksilver Flask as well with 10% movement speed on it. So that will give you 50% as well. And it gains charges whenever you critically strike. And since totems inherit your stats, including the on-hit effects, you'll be able to critically strike with them and get flash charges. Now we're going to take a quick dive over into the notes tab here. I have generally made a list of when you should be getting which item, as well as the enchantment priority, uh, replacements for things, which ascension to get, at what time, and generally how the gameplay works for this build. I won't read all of it because you can read it yourselves on screen or you can download the build if you want to check out the specifics of it. Okay, let's check out the tree now. So, we are Hierophant. Start in the basic Templar area. First things first, we get all the base nodes here. They will give us some basic offense, defense, and utility that we need. Then after you're done that, you head up here. I would usually grab the uh, life and mana here. It's up to you whether you want to grab it. I tend to like to play very tanky, so I would pick up this, clus this cluster of nodes first. I would head up past that. I would not take Asylum or the Protection Mastery yet. Those are for more for mapping, and I would generally pick these up after you get Soul Mantle for the reduced effect of curses on you. Then after that, we would be going right over here. We want to grab Shaman's Dominion, which will give a bunch of extra crit chance and crit multi to your totems, which is great. We can pick up Mental Rapidity, which will give you a ton of mana regeneration, and also lots of cast speed, which your totems love. We'll pick up some health. We'll pick up some extra power charges, or extra minimum power charges, and an extra maximum power charge to go with it. By this point, you will have gotten your first Ascension. 
which will be Conviction of Power, which is giving you plus four to minimum power and endurance charges, as well as a plus one to maximum power and endurance charges. So with the minimum from Disciple of the Forbidden, you will have a minimum and maximum of five power charges and a minimum and maximum of four endurance charges at all times. Moving forwards, we take the Mana Mastery here, which will give us specifically the Mana Reservation Efficiency of Skills here. That's going to become very important later when we go over our skills. And over here, we take just our general fire damage. We also take the Critical Strikes Do Not Inherently Ignite Fire Mastery, because our Armageddon brand, which is what we use to apply Ignite, since Flame Search cannot apply Ignite itself, generally does not care whether you are critting or not. It doesn't need to crit to apply its Ignite, so it doesn't really matter. You can just Ignite anyways, and this just works perfectly. Okay, so heading off, now that you've finished this cluster, you are going to be heading down here. Pick up the uh, crit nodes here. If you're finding that you're getting bursted down a lot, you can pick up the crit mastery. If not, you can hold off on the crit mastery till you're a bit closer to maps. That's generally when I find that it matters the most. Uh, I would pick up the uh, totem damage and life and duration here from Primal Manifestation and immediately rush Ancestral Bond. After that, I would go over to Sovereignty. Uh, I would not pick up the Reservation Mastery that is here. This is just an extra little perk to pick up when you're at the end of your build that just gives a little bit of damage and a little bit of physical damage reduction. It's not important. Don't pick it up until you've done everything else. I grab Purity of Flesh just for extra tankiness because this is going to be a very tanky build. I've added uh, Divine Judgment and Divine Fury here. Both are very important. So they just give a general big punch to damage. As well as, we also pick up 15% chance to freeze, shock, and ignite, which will be very, very important later when I show you the skills. Then we're going to head down, grab more health, head down further. We're going to grab some armor, max energy shield, and reduced extra damage from criticals. By the time we are done this, we will have almost immunity to critical strikes. So we have totem placement speed and totem damage over here, as well as a 5% reduction of damage from hits taken from your nearest totem's life before you. You can swap this totem mastery with the crit mastery over here if you find that you are suffering more from taking too much damage than you are from not having enough DPS. You can swap those out as you feel. Going down here, the rest is just defenses. So we have a lot of regen here. This is 226 regen for this whole section. We have life regeneration rate, which is a pretty rare stat to get. We have percent life regen, and then we have some flat life regen on the recovery mastery. After that, we just have more life, and then we go down here and we have more life and more armor, because this is going to be a very tanky build, and I intend with our flasks to hit 90% physical damage reduction very regularly. And finally, we have the extra damage from Critical Strikes. One other last note that I want to make really quickly on the passive tree is that if you're having any issues with damage when you're heading over here and allocating these points, you can take a pit stop over to here and grab Ancestral Bond. Because Ancestral Bond will give you an extra totem, and each totem does a supremely large amount of damage, so it is very much worth it. Next, we'll be moving on to skills. So in our main hand or off hand, doesn't really matter which, we're going to be having our travel and our curse. So we have flame dash with faster casting and flammability with faster casting. I generally find that flame dash is one of the best, if not the best travel skill. Just because it stores three charges, it recharges fast and it goes quite far. I also made sure that faster casting was on flammability because I find that stopping to curse sometimes can take too long because of the cast time. And you might look at the 0.5 cast time and think, well, that's really not a long time. It feels like a long time when a boss is bearing down on you, trust me. <laughs> In the offhand, 
I have our cast one stun set up. This is to add a chaos golem that adds an additional physical damage reduction. It's just extra fizz damage. You can also add a flame golem here if you'd like. And that will give you a little increase in damage, but the amount is so small that I generally wouldn't consider a 2% increase in damage to be worth it over 4% physical damage reduction. Especially since this 4% physical damage reduction is flat physical damage reduction, which is different than armor physical damage reduction. That means that this goes against things like bleeding and corrupted blood. Things like that that go through normal physical damage reduction? Nope. Not happening here. This is special. Next we move on to our auras. So I have a few unselected just because they're other ones I was playing with. I have uh, Herald of Ash here. So we use this for the increased fire damage and more spell fire damage buffs. It does have the overkill effect of burning things, but that doesn't apply because of the fact that we have Ancestral Bond. Going back to it. That makes it so that you can't deal damage with skills yourself. I don't believe that you can ignite something without dealing damage to it. That wouldn't really make a huge amount of sense to me. So that'll mainly just be for its spell damage. We have Zealotry for its spell damage as well as its critical strike chance for spells. Just simple DPS. And we have Determination after that. Some people like to go all damaging auras. I do not. In my opinion, it is very, very important to consider a defensive aura first over an offensive aura. Because this game, at least as of the past several leagues, has been more focused on having strong defenses than on having strong damage. It's become a very, very important thing. So I would pretty much never go without a defensive aura unless I had some several other layers of defense that were crazy that I just thought it just did not matter. But the 30% physical damage reduction that we're getting from this is very hard to replace. Plus, as you'll be seeing later, we use Molten Shell. And Molten Shell scales its buff based on this armor. So adding an extra 10,000 armor to the Molten Shell's buff it's a really big deal. Thinking of which, Molten Shell and Righteous Fire. These are unselected just because I don't want them to be affecting our stats over here. If you select Vol Righteous Fire, you get about 400,000 DPS, or 371,000, so that's a 16% increase. If you select Vol Molten Shell, you get a 2700 armor increase. And then there is Normal Molten Shell, which gives you also a 2700 armor increase. So the Normal Molten Shell is going to be on your left click, your movement skill. So it will be going off every 4 seconds, and it will be recharging after that. It tends to last for about 4 seconds and then cool down for about 4 seconds. So you have about a 50% uptime on it. and. It gives a buff equal to 10% of your armor up to a maximum of 5,000. So your armor with the Molten Shell buff is 17,000, or 17.6 thousand, I should say. So that's 1,763 extra damage that the buff can take that you don't have to. Next is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done. And that is to make a totem that makes a brand. I was trying to avoid doing something this stupid, but unfortunately, Ancestral Bond means that you can't deal damage with skills yourself, so I can't just use the Arm Armageddon brand myself. Now, why are we using an Armageddon brand? Well, see, this is actually where a lot of our damage comes from. It itself only does, if you look down here, 42,000 damage. That's nothing. But its function is very, very important. Because what it does is it is a 98% chance to ignite. Flame Surge likes things that are burning. It has a massive more damage modifier against things that are burning. It cannot ignite things and therefore cannot easily burn them. The Armageddon brand 
as the ignite so that the flame surge can be getting its buff from it. That is very important. The totem is created, which creates the brands, and it will keep casting and recasting that brand over and over, which will keep resetting its duration. When you replace that totem with your actual damaging totems, the brand will still stick on the enemy for about five seconds. And after the last ignite is cast, that ignite will last for another about five, six seconds, which will give you about 10-ish seconds, let's say, just be conservative, till you actually have to reapply it. And 10 seconds is a long time in path, but it really, really is when you're in a fight. You don't necessarily realize it, but 10 seconds in a boss fight, big deal. So you most likely will have killed basically anything by that point, unless you were fighting a big boss, like a story boss or a pinnacle boss. So you won't have to actually recast your buffing totem. Also, an important thing to note, there is elemental proliferation on Armageddon brand. I could have used ignite proliferation, but honestly, elemental proliferation is better for this because this also proliferates freeze and shock. As you can see on the calc page here, we have a 57% chance to shock and a 57% chance to freeze, as well as just a general chance to chill. Uh, I don't believe we really are going to be chilling except for when we're freezing because it's not going to be dealing enough damage to chill things for a while. But if you freeze or if you shock, it will proliferate because of elemental proliferation, which means that every single activation of the Armageddon brand has a chance to freeze and shock everything nearby, which will be a great defensive layer with freeze, as well as preventing you from dealing with any on-death explosions, and shock it gives a huge damage boost. Finally, we have combustion on Armageddon brand. Enemies ignited by supported skills have negative 10% to fire resistance. So this isn't the same as fire exposure. So this can also stack with fire exposure. Seeing as our Armageddon brand, is its purpose is to ignite, it will be applying the negative 10% to fire resistance. And then our flame surge totems, which are next, will be getting the buff of combustion. So speaking of this, Let's look at our Flame Surge totems. So we have six totems. We get one from base. We get two from our multiple totem support, bringing us to three. We get four from Ancestral Bond. We get five from Pursuit of Faith, which is why we take it second. And finally, we get number six from our Shaper Influence Shield. So going back to it, these are the options that we have here. You will have Flame Surge Totems with multiple totem support, so that we have the extra totems. You will have Concentrated Effect, Faster Casting, because this totem loves cast speed. Immolate for extra damage against burning things, because things will always be burning with the proliferated burning and proliferated ignite that we have. And Inspiration Support, because Oh man, do these totems cost a lot. Without inspiration support, it costs an extra 20 mana, so a quarter of it, making it much cheaper. Technically, fire penetration or increased critical strikes would be better, but the reduced mana is just too important to pass up, in my opinion. One final note before we finish off here. There are other things that can make this build stronger. This is not the strongest form of this build. If this was in a permanent league and not meant for shifting stones, then there are other things that you can pick up. For example, Legacy of Fury. It adds a fair bit of damage just on its own, and it scorches things that are nearby it, which is great. Plus it proliferates its own burning, which is awesome. The only problem is that it comes from the Maven, which means that it's harder to get in a seven day event. But if you can get it, it is very good. Also, if you can get an enchantment on it, this is a super, super big deal. I go over the enchantments for boots in the notes page. We also could have an enchantment on the helmet as well. 
I picked the Flammability Curse Enchantment because it is the least valuable of all the enchantments, so it is the most conservative pick. If you pick an enchantment for the, your build, you're going to want the Flame Surge damage with hits and ailments against burning enemies, because that is a little bit more than triple the damage of the Flammability Curse effect. And that's the Flame Surge Totem build. Thank you all for watching. I would love to know how your Shifting Stones event goes, or whether you use this for a League Starter or not. Comment down below if you enjoy this build or use it at all. I would really love to know, and if you have any critiques of it, I'm totally up to listen. You can either leave messages in the comment section, or you can come and talk to us in the stream. We do every Tuesday and Thursday. Link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you again soon. Ian Shifting Stones.